Hello. This is Biblical Tarot. Here we go. Let's see if it's okay. This is Biblical Tarot, and I'm back with another video. And I wanted to do a few videos about this tarot deck. It's called the Hoodoo Tarot. And um, I've, I've probably done a reading with these on in one of my videos, but it's probably back in, in the catalog. And believe me, I have not tried to even organize it. <laughs> or like it's got like 200 and some videos but they're not organized or nothing but i want to talk about this like this is a really good deck it really is um i really love the artwork but it's so weird like I, the artwork you can really see it better in person i wish like they made them a little more vivid i don't know what to say like but like i can i don't know it's just hard i can say it like this is hard to like they don't look as good as they do in person that's what i can say they don't look as good as they do in person they're not like photographic like if i take a picture of them i want them to like really really pop out like you probably need a really 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 good camera like to make them pop out you know what i'm saying but it's really good artwork it's just the muddy colors because of you know they're trying to make it like louisiana um you know backwoodsy kind of i don't know that's that's the feeling i get i love it it's just that, like, on camera, it's not as, you know, colorful. But I love, I love this deck. And one thing about it, though, this is the thing. Let's see. Let me see. I mean, let me look for a good, a good one here that I can use that's awesome. I just had one that uh, I had looked up. It was the moon. No, it wasn't the moon. It was, yeah, it was the moon. It was, it was the moon. It was the, um, Pisces. 18, number 18. But it's somewhere in the deck here, guys. And I just gotta find it. I'm sorry. I'm taking this long time looking for. You know what I can do? Okay. I found it. So this is what I was talking about. Like, I love this, you know? And I'm thinking like, oh my God, this, I don't know, just this, the symbol here on the card is, to me, is very powerful. Okay? And I, I can tell it's Louisiana and Texas together. You see what I'm saying? You can see the Louisiana and you can see the Texas right there. So, you know, like, it's like, is that the heart of like the voodoo or whatever? I don't know because, you know, I'm Northern. I'm Northern. I'm, 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 I'm up here up North. So, you know, I have no idea about that kind of stuff, but the key like totally makes it look even more mysterious and stuff you know the key and when i look at it i'm like oh my god i remember that movie you guys always know i'll go back to movies pop culture okay i remember that movie called the skeleton key you know what i mean it was called the skeleton key and it was a here goes right here y'all you know i'm always ready here it was called the skeleton key remember it was like, I don't know, 2005, it says right there. And it was called The Skeleton Key. It was a good movie. I watched it. I seen it a few times. It was a good movie. It was called The Skeleton Key. Now, come on, like, look. Ooh, shit. Sorry, guys. <laughs> My bad. But look at that. Similar a little bit, yeah? The same energy, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, my God. I can remember that movie. As soon as I looked at that, I'm like... That gives me the energy of a movie I've seen before, you know. It's called The Skeleton Key, you know. It was a good movie, too, though. It really was. Um, let me see. Just Skeleton Key, yo. 
No, but it was good. It really was. And this is like a side sidebar here, like side side track. I don't know what to call it, but it was about this girl. Her name was Carolyn, and she was a hospice aide. She quit her position at a nursing home, and she was hired as a caretaker on an isolated plantation, okay? And the aging matron, the woman that the woman of the house, her name was Violet, and she needed her to help her look after her husband, okay? And he was paralyzed by an apparent stroke. And at the insistence of the family's estate lawyer, Luke Marshall, Caroline accepts the position. Okay, down here after after Ben attempts to escape his room during a storm, Caroline in, investigates the house house's attic, okay, the attic, where Violet said Ben suffered his stroke. She uses a skeleton key, which Violet gave her. She discovers a secret room. See this? <laughs> that just is just so cool. Okay, she discovers a secret room filled with ritual paraphernalia. Caroline confronts Violet, who reveals the room used to belong to two African-American servants who were employed at the house 90 years before. Okay? Sorry, guys. The servants, Mama Cecile, Cecil or Cecile, whatever her name is, and Papa Justify were renowned hoodoo practitioners. They were lynched after conducting a ritual with the owners, two children, from whom Violet and Ben later bought the house. Violet tells Caroline that they keep no mirrors in the house because they see reflections of Cecile and Justify in them. Caroline borrows a photograph record from the attic, Conjure of Sacrifice, a recording of Papa Justify reciting a hoodoo ritual. Caroline surmises that Ben's stroke was caused by hoodoo, but believes that his par his paralytic state is nocebo effect induced by his own belief rather than something supernatural. Taking advice from her, her friend Jill, Caroline visits a hidden hoodoo shop in a nearby laundromat where a hoodoo woman gives her tools and instructions to cure Ben. After she conducts the ritual, Ben regains some ability to move and speak, and he begs Carolina to get him away from Violet. Caroline tells Luke she is suspicious of Violet, but the remains but he remains skeptical. They travel to a gas station that Caroline previously noted was lined with brick dust, which she was told is a hoodoo defense. Supposedly, no one who means no harm can pass a line of brick dust. She asks one of the proprietors, uh, a blind woman, but the conjurer of sacrifice, which she learns is a spell wherein the caster steals the remaining years of life from the victim, increasingly convinced, convinced of hoodoo's authentic, authentic, authenticity. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Caroline fears that Violet will soon cast a spell on Ben. Interesting. Caroline discovers that Violet is unable to pass a line of brick dust laid across one of the house's doorways, confirming her suspicions. She incap in incapacitates Violet and attempts to escape the house with Ben, but the front gate is chained shut. Caroline hides Ben on the property and enters Luke's office for help. Luke revealed to be Violet's accomplice. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Oh my God. So like, I'm going to go ahead and tell the movie. Those two people are the two African-American servants that they say they keep seeing in the mirrors. And that's why they don't, you know, have any mirrors in the house. It's because they are those two African-American servants who put their souls inside of the bodies of the two children you know, and once they did that, you know, they were inherited the house and, you know, now they need somebody else because they're old and about to die. You know, they, you know, pretty much done with their years and they need another host. 
So that girl, she wanted her body and that guy had already taken a body, which he was the lawyer. So I hope you understood that. But when I seen these cards, when I seen these cards and I seen this and I'm like, oh my God, this totally reminds me of a movie. And it was, like I said, this movie right here, the skeleton key, even though I know like, it's not like that lady took this deck and she said oh let me do the skeleton key no it's a mere african-american hoodoo voodoo okay it just happens to like share the same energy you know because why wouldn't it it's about hoodoo you know so i just thought that was interesting and i'm probably just being bam babbling on about it but i thought it was interesting you know, because it reminded me of that movie. And I, and I was like, the symbol on these, on the front of the, you know, cards, very powerful. You know, the key plus Louisiana and Texas joined together. Even though it is joined together, all of the states are joined together. But it just, I don't know, it's just powerful. And I wonder what she meant by that. Because I think I, 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 I looked at the book. And it doesn't say anything about the symbol on top of the cards. But I will try to look at that again. I just thought it was interesting. And the the key, you know, the key, the master key. I would like to really, like, I don't know, look at that. If you understand what I'm saying, because that's what I do. I think we can find it from there. We can find it from there, right here. Because I remember. I need to bring this down. Sorry, my friends. There we go. Can you see good? <clears throat> I can get it from here. And it's called a skeleton key, also known in North America as a pass key. A pass key. Is a type of master key in which the serrated, serrated edge has been removed in such a way that it can open numerous locks. Most commonly, the uh, warded lock. The term derives from the fact that the key has been reduced to its essential parts. The term is also used syn synonymously with master key to refer to any key, key card or other device capable of opening a variety of locks. A skeleton key is a key that has been filed or cut to create one that can be used to unlock a variety of warded locks, each with a different configuration of wards. This can usually be done by removing most of the center of the key, allowing it to pass by the ward. This is like a really metaphysical type of thing right here. I really... I really feel like this is like a spiritual like type of a thing right here. I just really do. Don't you? Like, I don't know. Like, there's something. I mean, and I swear to God, like, <clears throat> I can like think up a script to a movie with this. Like, like, just like the joining together of Louisiana and Texas, like, and this key on top of it, it just, my imagination, like, like, they have, they have, like, the key that unlocks America, you know what I mean? Like, our whole history, like, of, you know, the Native Americans coming over here at the beginning, I mean, what am I talking about? The Native Americans being here. And, uh, you know, Europeans coming over here and, you know, I'm pretty sure people had even been over here before that, like before, you know, the pilgrims came over here or the whoever, Quakers, pilgrims, all that. I'm pretty sure there was like, I know Vikings came over here, like, you know, through Canada that way, you know, I, I know they got here and I'm pretty sure people came the other way South America like like this America holds so much history you know what I mean and I feel like I feel like spiritually like like I don't know maybe 
the slaves that came over here can be the key, you know, the slaves, or maybe like the mixture, like, cause you know, America is a, a melting pot and it's like the mixture of of the races, of all of the races. And maybe like, that's the key. That's the key. You know, when I look at the Bible, I look at, I think it's Genesis 10, if I'm not mistaken. And that's the nations, you know, where they start, where they, the Babylon, the tower, and, and you have, um, all of the people and you have them speaking the same language. And then you have them building that tower. And then it, God was like, no, 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 you know, we can't let them do that. You know what I'm saying? And he, you know, he confuses the languages, you know, and then they all like separate and go where they understand each other. You know what I'm saying? And then when I think about it, I think about how we're here in America and we've all come back together again. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, they've all come back together again. They're here in the melting pot and maybe, maybe that is the key.